Creating giant epic Minecraft maps is a very hard and arduous task. Or maybe it isn't. I'm going to show you guys how to create this world in 10 minutes or less with World Painter. So this is actually a part two to my first tutorial. I made this video assuming you watched that and have played around with World Painter for a little bit. I highly recommend watching that video and then coming back here. This video is going to be going over every useful tool and feature this program offers for terrain creation in lots and lots of detail. So, let's hop right into it. Alright, so we're going to start off with the toolbox at the top left. We're going to select the spray can and sand and we're going to kind of click around here. As you can see the spray can, as you hold down click, it will create little specks of dust in the color of sand. The intensity changes the speed at which it is placed. And I'm going to hit Control Z to undo this. So that's pretty simple. We're going to hit on to paint with a brush, or the pencil I mean. We're going to kind of go around here. And you can see that the intensity doesn't really affect how this is placed, but a bigger brush will change it. Next tool is one I frankly don't really use, which is the paint can. Uh, when you click, it will fill up the whole area as long as it's the same material. So this is all grass right now. That means it will fill up the entire map. But if I were to use the pencil and paint on like a circle of puzzle, like this, and then I select the paint can and sand, and I click inside, you can see it will stop at the puzzle. So overall, not very useful, but maybe you can find some use out of it. I personally have never used it. The next is text, uh, another kind of useless thing that I would probably never use, unless you want to kind of like sign your map or something. You know, you can put hi, and you can see in view, show 3D view, you can see it shows up, there's texture on there. Not very useful, but kind of fun to play around with. So a simple rule for understanding World Painter is that there are only two actions you can take, either changing the shape of the terrain or painting something onto it. The top row of the toolbox only applies to painting stuff, it does not change terrain or the shape of it. The third row of the toolbox, however, is all about changing the terrain shape. So we're going to go to raise terrain here on the third row of the toolbox, and as you can see, the intensity affects it a lot it affects how quickly that it raises terrain out of the ground and we can also do the flatten tool uh, i'm going to show you guys a good application of flatten tool and let me just set up a 3d view here for you guys to view it the proper way to use the flatten tool there's a right way and a wrong way so if you want to use it on mountains to create layered mountains you set it to 100 percent and then you start clicking down the slope and it will start making nice layered mountains like this and you want to be using it sparingly. I took a lot of time in this part, but basically you're just going to flatten from the top to the bottom and you're going to get a result similar to this if you made a mountain like this. We're going to move on to another tool I don't really use that much, which is the smooth tool. This is just good for making a kind of rolling mountain if you're going for that. It's good for deserts. Other than that, it's kind of a useless tool that I don't use much. So the next tool on the list is one I don't really use much. It's the mountain tool. Uh, basically, it raises a mountain that is closer to your cursor and the shape and size of it, whereas the raise tool, it kind of blends it with the terrain more. So you can see, I typically use the raise tool more than the mountain tool, but perhaps you can find some usefulness out of this in World Painter. Moving on to miscellaneous tools, we have the set spawn point over here. This is just where your player spawns. You can click to set it whenever the world generates, so that's speaks for itself. We got global operations. I will be going over this in a kind of pro video or the next follow-up. We also got pyramid. Uh, when you click here, it just raises a pyramid out of the ground. There's one type of pyramid, which is kind of diagonal, you can see here. And then we also have the more square pyramid, which is next to it, which is... I'm gonna be honest, both of these are pretty useless. Uh, there is a small application you can do for it. Perhaps you can use it to kind of make the starter for a mountain and then use the pyramid as like a base, but I personally don't recommend it and I have never used the pyramid in any kind of practical application aside from just adding a straight up pyramid. And honestly, I don't even know why it's here. So we're gonna go on to selection and copying now. So unlike the pyramid, this is actually useful and doesn't require 2000 IQ to use in any practical way. Uh, so with selection, basically you're gonna make a small area that you wanna select, you click it, make a yellow, it'll highlight in yellow and then you'll click the copy. And when you click anywhere after copying, you will paste it. 
And so this is very good for making identical areas of the map or simply generating a huge area of the map and then kind of making small edits to it to quickly create maps that look different but take a lot less effort. You can remove your selection by clicking the X and it's as simple as that. I'm gonna undo all these and we're now going to talk about fluids and water, which I have been saving for last for a reason. So fluids are very important. If you don't understand how they work, you can end up ruining your whole map with floating water blocks or kind of just flood your entire map and make it a pain to fix. So we're going to lower it and as you can see, it's gonna create water even though we lowered it with the raise tool. And so with World Painter, you can't really just place water. It's more of like a water level that you set when you make a map. By default, it's 62, I believe. By default, if you lower the terrain below sea level, it will start covering it with water. You're going to have to use the sponge or the water tool to change this, and it can be a bit tricky to work with, but I'm going to tell you how it works. So if we select the sponge icon here, which is a square, and we just select something and we just click it, it will remove it. As you can see, there's no water here, and so this is how you drain areas. And it works the same with lava, you can sponge lava. So just keep that in mind, very good for making volcanoes and stuff. So you're probably wondering why there's like sand and ice and rock everywhere, even though we're doing all grass. So actually in Dimension Properties, if you go to Theme, this shows where things will automatically spawn when it's above a certain Y level. So you can control things here, but by default this is what it is, so... If you're wondering why that's happening, you can just fix that by deleting these layers. I'm not going to delete it because personally I like it, I find it very helpful. It's also really easy to change. Uh, right here, these are beaches, which are spawning underneath uh, Y level 62. So it makes it kind of wrap around the water areas when you create it, and it's just very helpful to have it be done automatically. All right, let's talk about flooding. So when you put your mouse with the water tool, uh, the flood something, it will flood to a Y level of wherever your mouse is at. You can see Y level at the bottom there. And so once it goes to a certain Y level, it will spill over into the other areas until it reaches a place where it does not go over. So if I click here, it's going to flood the whole area. And let's do a 3D view here. If I lower terrain, it's going to make the water level uneven because I flooded the area above compared to the area below. So we can show a really extreme example of this and how this can easily mess up your maps by creating a kind of high up area and then creating a low area where I will make some water. And you know, this can be an example for a waterfall, but I don't recommend using it this way as the waterfalls don't turn out the best. I'll show you how to make waterfalls in a pro tutorial. So I'm going to just add water, I'm going to flood the top, and then I'm going to use the flatten tool to move the bottom part into it and connect it, right? And so don't be fooled here, the water is not connected and it's not the same level at all. There's actually an extreme difference, even though looks may deceive you. I'm saying this because this is a mistake that every new person to World Painter does. So for example, if I flatten out this mountain, right? This water here, it looks like it's normal. It looks like it flattened with it. It actually didn't. If you look in 3D view, this is a giant floating cylinder of water now. And so this is a mistake that everyone does and I'm just warning you about it before you go and do it. So now we're gonna show it in game, we're gonna export the map and we're gonna set it to 1.19, we're gonna set it to creative and allow cheats and we're gonna export it. So as you can see, this terrain turned out pretty interesting even though we didn't bother texturing it or adding trees or any of that. So we're going to move on to more features because we have just barely scratched the surface of what this program can do. Alright, I'm going to be showing you guys the power of layers by making a 2000 by 2000 completely flat map and I'm not going to be changing the terrain or making any mountains on this whatsoever. And we're going to make this terrain very interesting and better than vanilla despite that. Layers are what makes or breaks your map. The difference between a high quality map and a trash map is the layers the creator decides to use. I'm going to show you all of World Painter's pre-made layers, what they do, how they behave, and some examples of how to use them, as well as teaching you how to make your own custom textures and your own layers too. So we're going to start off with texture layers, I'm just going to make a little pencil with obsidian here just for kind of an example, and we're going to go to desert. Uh, I click a little dot of desert here and this turns this whole area to the desert biome which means that it will not rain in here and it will also spawn mobs like husks 
And if there's structures that spawn here, will be a desert temple or a desert village, depending on if you have structures on. We can also go to snow. Uh, the snow biome, uh, it will start snowing in this area and it will change some other things. You just gotta experiment with it, there's a lot of these. We got beaches. It will turn this area to a river biome and it will also mix sand with clay and gravel and grass and dirt if it's underwater. So it's very useful. It's also the default layer when you go below 64 sea level. Now I'm going to show you guys how to create your own custom layers. Uh, I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it, uh, name it custom sand because I'm going to be making my custom desert. So right here you go to complex and you can select all the materials you want. You just click add new material when you need it. And World Painter will automatically mix these together. So I'm going to be looking for uh, sandstone, I believe. Or, no, nah, that's not, that's red sand. Where's sandstone? There we go. So it will dot together sandstone, and this is a perfect example of using for a custom desert where you want like little gradients of sand. So it'll be dotted together and it will just look really nice and custom. A lot better than just solid sand by itself. Just seeing the sand block over and over, it's good to have a little bit of variety. And so these are kind of the five different ways or five different examples of things you can add. And uh, actually, it seems that my notes are getting mixed up while I'm recording this video. We're actually going to be creating a six example where we do kind of a crazy concrete pattern, sort of, just to show the capabilities of World Painter to you guys. So I'm going to be making kind of a orange, red, yellow blend that you might have seen at the beginning of the video. And, you know, you just have to tap the key of the... Like I'm tapping a Y here to create like find like yellow concrete powder. And I'm also gonna be looking for orange as well, so just tap O and just go down the list till I find it. And it does take a little bit because of the amount of blocks that are in this game, but once you get it done, it's definitely worth it. So once I have this here, you're gonna tap layers and that will turn it into a layered type. And we're just gonna make sure everything's good here. I want to kind of have it transition between orange and yellow and red. So I'm probably going to be adding another concrete powder here for yellow. Until I get kind of the pattern I like. I don't want to spend too much time on this, so I'll probably just cut forward to when I like it. So I place this custom layer down and it's showing as all orange, but when I move it up the Y, as you can see, it changes color as I change the elevation every three or so blocks that I go up in and the Y axis. And this is because it's set to zero degrees on the X axis. So I'm gonna set this to around 40 degrees right here. And that will turn it to stripes without changing the size. I'm actually gonna set this to 45, I think. That would be better and make it more straight. And this is how we get stripes. Um, very nice, just kind of showing you what World Painter can do. You can make them like wavy stripes too. So I'm gonna exit out of this world and probably reload the program again or reload the world. And I'm gonna show you how it looks in game. And here's how it looks in game. I'm gonna hop right down to it. And as you can see, you can make a football field in World Painter if you wanted to. There's a lot of possibilities. The possibilities are endless. That's why I love this program. Don't you love this program too? So I set the weather to rain here, and you can see the difference between me going inside the snow circle and outside. That's because the biome is different. You can see in this desert, it's not raining anymore either. So that's kind of proof that in F3, you can see it's a desert as well. And yeah, but here in the obsidian, it's still raining because I have not changed the biome here. But I will. I'm going to change this to the nether next time. So while we're on that subject, we're going to talk about changing biomes manually. As you can see, under terrain... Uh, there's gonna be biome tab and in that biome tab it gives you every single biome that you can select from Minecraft Including the variation so you can see there's a little flower you can check here and So for example if we click on forest you can see that's a flower and a windswept version and you can get every variation through here But you can also make your own biome. So let's say you want to make a twilight forest biome what you would do is in the namespace you would put twilight forest and then whatever biome you want i don't know the exact names of twilight forest biomes but this would turn it to a modded 
biome, which is very useful if you want to make modded worlds. On the obsidian area, I'm going to turn this to a crimson forest, and remember you have to have the pencil selected with probably the circle brush or the square I recommend. And this stripe area, I'm going to turn into an end biome, I'm going to make sure it's right on it. And so the end and nether biomes are interesting because they change the sky and they also change the particle effects of the world and uh, the end will start spawning endermen so in that stripe area you're gonna start seeing endermen so we're gonna look at that in game as well i'm now going to go over texturing grass and taking your world to the next level if you want it to look really colorful and immersive and just nice to look at what you can do is what i call biome texturing where you put biomes down next to each other and have them blend the grass into each other and this will affect how the water and grass and a couple other blocks look to make it more colorful and nicer to look at. Next I'm going to head back to layers and I'm going to go over the four tree biomes which is deciduous, pine, swamp, and jungle which are all pre-made. Uh, the only one I really use is jungle as that's the only one that's really unique. The rest are kind of just generic Minecraft really small trees. They are useful in some situations. Uh, more importantly I want to also go over frost. Frost is actually very important and is the key to making snow biomes. Frost coats the ground in snow and also coats the trees and any objects you have as well. Caverns and chasms I don't really use as that's a preset layer when you export it so I don't recommend using these ever but if you want to have a whole map where there's no caves on it and then have one small area where there are caves then that would be the only example where this would be useful. Next tool we have is Void. This just deletes all blocks in the area that you mark, so it will be basically players can jump down into the void over here. Resources. Uh, resources aren't too important, but depending on intensity, it will increase the ore spawn, so if I have it at 100% intensity, it will increase it by double. And I'll just lay down some uh, pre-made layers here, the deciduous, the pine, and uh, all that to just show you guys how it looks in the final result. We'll also do Swamp as well, just to show you guys too, and Jungle. Alright, now for a really useful layer, this is called Populate. This allows Minecraft to automatically populate based on the biome. So it will add random things like extra plants, extra lava pools, little water pools, and it really makes your life, it really makes your map come to life. So that's what all the pre-made layers do, and now we're going to go over how to make your own custom layers, and this is where it gets really interesting. When you click the plus and it says add custom layer, you're just going to open it up. You're going to look for schematics, because that's what you do, you drop schematics in. And World Painter automatically just generates them on over and over repeatedly with random patterns and random rotations. And it's very good for making forests, so you just open up this forest folder I have here, and by the way, I have a World Painter starter pack on my Patreon for five bucks where you get a thousand of these schematics, so go check that out in the description. The intensity of your brush and the object per 20 right there that affects how dense the forest will be, or in many cases how frequent the schematics are placed on the ground. So I'm just going to make a circle here and I'm just going to drop it in. We're going to be going over custom plants now. When you open this, you will be met with a screen with percentages of what plants you want to add. This has all plants in Minecraft, it's going to be placing it on the ground. And I do recommend placing the plants layer with a spray can instead of a pencil. However, for this example, I want it to be very dense, so I'm going to be putting it with a pencil myself. But this will completely fill the ground with a bunch of melons and bamboo and stuff. And if it's in water, I added that coral. Uh, if there's any water around, it will add coral inside of it, which in this example there is none, it's just kind of a force of habit of mine. And so once I have that done, I'm going to click and add it. I'm going to show you guys now how to add rivers. You're going to go to plus and then custom ground cover layer. You'll be met with this screen. You're going to set the thickness to negative and that will make the ground cover go into the ground. You're going to look for water on the material. You're just gonna tap W till you find it, click OK. And uh, we're gonna do smooth so that the river kind of smooths out instead of just being a straight up square that just goes straight down. I'm also gonna lower it to negative four so that the river is four blocks deep and the width we're going to make it three so that if we were to make a river that's seven blocks deep, it would have 
kind of a smooth width that kind of goes down. It's hard to explain. It'll be easy to explain showing you in game. Like, I don't know the words to explain this exactly off the top of my head. But we're gonna look for small, like a couple pixels between 7 to 5 on this river. And we're gonna try and get it just right before we zoom out and really just go to town making this. And so you can see, once I have it about 7 blocks large, I'm just gonna sweep it over, make little river patterns, and I'll get back to you when I've created the whole thing. Alright, so I decided to just drop the rivers everywhere. I made some a little bit larger, some areas than others. I'll show you the results of that. We're gonna move on to the caves now. So add custom caves in the plus. And caves are kind of complicated. We're gonna make a basic land tunnel cave where I want it to sort of go through a mountain. So uh, in the pro tutorial that I make after this, leave a like by the way, I need likes, spread this other people. Uh, in the pro tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how like the magic, the magic of caves, because you can use this to make floating islands and other crazy things. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the level of the floor to 64 because that's the flat area. And I'm going to make it up to 100 so that the cave is 36 blocks uh, in height and size. So, and we actually got to make a mountain to showcase this example. So let me find a good brush. Is it higher? And that's a good size. I'm going to flatten it out, kind of the entrance of the cave, make it over here. Then we're going to tap on tunnels, we're going to go to the pencil. And whoops, that flattened on. Undo that. And we're just going to make a nice little tunnel through here. And we're actually going to upgrade this cave more because right now it's going to be really boring. Okay, so I'm remaking the cave. I'm going to set the bottom width to 23, the top width to 22. I'm going to set the fixed level to 65, so that's a little bit higher. And here's where it gets kind of interesting. So the biome, I'm going to set to a crimson forest so that the cave gets really dusty and full of like red uh, particle effects. It also gives kind of scary nether sounds. We're also going to set the material of the ceiling and walls and floor. And so what I'm looking for is a uh, nether brick. I want the top to be all dark. So we'll set that to that. And that's one material. The walls are another example. We're going to do a wavy nether sort of pattern. So I'm going to be looking for a lot of nether blocks. So probably like red concrete, maybe some nether rack. Uh, honestly, the possibilities are endless. I'm going to be doing another kind of sweeping feeling. So let's see the floors. Uh, I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to switch the variation range, which is how we get waves. I'm going to set it to high. We're also going to scale it up so that it's nice. The waves are nice and big. I'm going to set the axis and the angles so that it kind of wraps around the cave a little bit more. Just getting the waves correct, we're gonna click OK. So walls I'm gonna set to the same. Uh, I'm gonna add a floor layer to this, and again, this is from my World Painter pack. Link in the description again. Wink wink nudge nudge. Uh, I'm gonna be looking for a lot of nether assets and spikes. I'm gonna be going through everything here. Crimson, crimson. These are a bunch of small sample crimson trees I have. Now I'm looking for spikes. I'm probably going to go with volcanic magma spikes from this. Who the f we got a nice sample of magma spikes. And this is a nice mix, I think. So when you're adding trees, sometimes you don't want them to stick out of the floor. So you're going to double click on them. And then where you see this offset thing, you're just going to lower it by one or two blocks on the Y axis and that will make it so on slopes the objects that you place don't stick out. I highly recommend doing this with trees too, but especially with these spikes they have a wide uh, surface area at the bottom and that's the reason because they will start sticking out on any slope or terrain. So keep in mind this works just like object and plant layers. We're gonna go to roof layers and we're gonna add custom plants layers on the roof. So it's gonna be hanging from the roof, right? 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple of weeping vines and hanging roots, just like whatever nethery things I can think of. And we're going to apply that to the roofs that it's hanging down. Uh, there's also some light source, so I'm gonna be doing some glow berries as well. Uh, I also want some more particle effects, so we're also gonna do spore blossoms, add that as well. I'm gonna lower it to around 30 so that's not as common. And I'm also gonna copy this over to the floor as well. And I'm gonna add jack-o'-lanterns to the floor layer. So now that the layer is all finished and it's how I want it, we're gonna draw it on. Uh, I'm gonna be using one of the circles. I'm drawing it on right here. Make it nice and wavy and then we're gonna kind of cut it out, give it some shape with a more uh, defined brush instead of just rounded circles. And I think this looks pretty good. This is ready to be viewed in game, this entire map, I believe. So guys, this is the result of 25 minutes of work on this. If you are someone who watched this to make a map for your server, and you want to save lots of time creating the perfect layers for your biomes, I am offering the World Painter Instant Biome Pack, which includes trees, rocks, and caves preset layers for over 40 different biomes to really spice up your maps if you want to save a lot of time. These layers I offer are what I use on videos and commissions for people and are all yours to use for your own projects. It also comes bundled with a thousand plus asset pack I made in my previous video. It's a steal of a deal if you ask me. Link to this is in the description on my Patreon. Take it easy guys, 100 likes and I'll make a part 3 of this series. This tutorial took a lot of effort to make so please drop a like and subscribe if you found this helpful.